Well, I'm going to get the radio, all right? All right. Always get the radio. Hi, this is Stan from uh, Reno. Yes, sir. I got a what if for you. All right. What if Art Bell was a 99th degree mason told all his secrets on the air? Well, then he'd be dead. It's as simple as that, huh? Of course. Every, well, everybody uh, above the 78th degree knows that. Well, I thought that uh, once you reached the higher degrees that you could have uh, allies to call on from the other side that would protect you. Azar, uh, no matter how big you are, mm -hmm. there's always someone bigger. Well, that's probably true, but, uh, you know, the old united we stand thing. Everybody's got a boss. <laughs> hey, I suppose that's Even true. 99th degree masons. Oh, my goodness. Uh, would it be okay just to refer you from now on, to you from now on as the 99? Sure. Okay, great. Or Agent 99, if you wish. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, circles, circles is the wrong way to put it, but uh, uh, encompasses five acres. It's a loop antenna. I mean, it's really, really, this baby is big. There's no question about it on a total of... Uh, uh, 13 towers. Now, this antenna does something pretty weird, and I'm going to outline it right now because I know it'll be a source of some discussion. This antenna has some strange properties, or maybe not strange. You know, maybe it's, it's normal, but it has a very great deal of voltage on it. And there's couple things I want to tell you about this. Number one, the voltage is at a minimum like 330 volts. It has components of both AC and DC, which we saw on a scope. We haven't had any real pros out here to test it. I've done about as much testing as I can do. Our local electric company was going to come out here and uh, inspect it, test it, but they never did. It's really got enough voltage and current to knock you on your butt. Here's, here's two other facts about it. Well, three other facts. Number one, that voltage is present on a clear, blue sky, no wind day. I mean, no wind, dead still. I've got a sort of a Frankenstein switch out there that I can throw to ground, and I do, fast. So you, you would think there would be a rise time for that voltage, but there isn't. It's there instantly. You can draw a like quarter-inch spark every time you close it to ground, and, and I mean even in rapid fashion. So the rise time is awfully quick. So that's pretty weird, right? And then people said, well, it might be coupling from your local electric lines. I thought, well, that was a reasonable suggestion. So we tested it when we had a power failure. The voltage was still there. In fact, frankly, I view the voltage as more of a bother than anything else, but of course it has possibilities. I have something that takes it to ground, uh, and I did that after I lost about two or three very expensive radios. Well, three, actually. Very expensive. And um, so I have a special apparatus that, uh, that takes it to ground with a choke and some other stuff. Goes to ground. Safely discharged to ground. It's an awesome antenna. Then there's one other thing, and you might want to explain this to me, and I, I probably, it's bad luck for me to be saying this right now, but bear in mind I have 13 towers out there. The, uh, the center tower that I feed is 100 feet, better than 100 feet high. The others are, I think, 76 feet each. This is a big deal. In all the years that I've had this up, you would imagine that I would have been hit by lightning a lot of times. But it's never happened. That's me knocking on wood. It's never happened. You know, we're, we're going on 15, 18 years, whatever it is. I should have been hit a whole bunch of times, but I haven't been yet. On wood. Now, there is a theory that having this many towers, and they're all grounded may protect me against lightning. I don't know that to be true, and I could well get hit by lightning, and the whole thing could, uh, the whole theory could go up in smoke, me knocking again, <laughs> and I tremble every time we have a big lightning storm. 
but it's kind of interesting if you go out in the dark and there's a thunderstorm coming over you can see a a kind of a purplish um ball of something like a plasma little plasma ball at the top of these towers and then there'll be a lightning strike and poof the little purple balls are gone so it may be protecting me and every time i say that I have to knock on wood because, you know, I, as I mentioned, I tremble every time. So that's what I've got here. That's what it does. And, you know, theories beyond that of what does it, you're welcome to contemplate. Uh, if anybody has serious equipment, wants to come out and test it, it is available uh, to be tested. This is truly amazing. I can see beams of aurora just moving around on the horizon above the sky glow of Canberra, like they're waving in the breeze. I've never seen anything like this before. This is incredible. That's northeast there. That's due east there. It's just in pillars arranged in a circle. And they're just kind of hanging there. Maybe slowly turning clockwise, but very interesting. Never seen them like that. Oh my goodness! It's so, it's so red over Canberra, and yeah. you can see beams just coming straight out of the ground. I'm, I'm just hand holding the camera, just videoing it. Yeah, this is I'm going out the back just, just, just to have a look, just to confirm that what I just did two minutes ago is still current. General Electric. Here is Ronald Reagan. Good evening. Tonight, John Forsythe stars on the General Electric Theater. And you will see product reports that show how in the things that lead to a better life for us all, at General Electric, progress is our most important product. <laughs> <laughs> 